Hello everyone, my name is Hubert and this is Teach Me channel. Today we will do some chemistry and namely we will look at how to balance chemical equations. I think it's a very important skill, any chemistry you will do, you will need to be able to balance chemical equations. Today we will cover how to do that the basic way. However, tomorrow we will look at how to balance chemical equations algebraically, which is very useful for much harder equations. So keep an eye out on that, guys. So without further ado, let's start. First thing we need to do, we have an equation here. And first thing we need to do is we need to take, take a stock of all atoms on this side of an equation and we need to take a stock of all atoms on this side of an equation. So let's get started. Let's start with calcium. Calcium, we put that down here. We have only one calcium on this side of an equation. Uh, oxygens are up next. Oxygen we have two times O, so we have two oxygens on this molecule. However, we also have four oxygens here. So we have six oxygens in total. Hydrogens. We have two hydrogens here. However, we also have three hydrogens here. So we have five in total. And the final one is phosphorus, where we only have one on this side of an equation. So now we have a summary of all the players on this side of an equation. Now we need to take a stock of all the atoms on this side of an equation. So the way I do this is I match them up like this. So I put calcium on this side to make it easier to see. And on this side, we have three calciums here. However, we don't have anything there. So three in total. Oxygens. We have eight oxygens in this molecule, along with one oxygen here. So we have nine oxygens in total. Hydrogens. We have two hydrogens here, and we don't have any more on this side. So we have two in total. Phosphorus, we have two phosphorus molecules. So we have two phosphorus in total on this side of an equation. So now we have stock of all these atoms involved. And now we need to start balancing. However, where, where on earth do we even begin here? We have so many numbers, so many atoms, where on earth do we even begin? So, the way I begin is by looking at what can be fixed. Essentially, we need to fix all of these numbers so they are the same in pairs. So, I would be looking at an atom that we can fix in only one way that there is only one way possible to fix that particular atom. So for example, if we were to start off with oxygen, we have six oxygen here, nine here, we wouldn't know which one of these to increase because we have two places where we can increase oxygen. So that would not be a good starting point. Now, calcium on the other hand, there is only one way, one way to increase calcium on this side of an equation. And that is by increasing the uh, amount of this molecule. So we are going to do just that. So because we have three calcium here, we are going to put three here, three lots of this molecule. And what does it do? So what does it do? We have three calciums here, so now this is good. We matched up calciums. However, because we increased three lots of this whole 
molecule, this will have knock-on effects on oxygen and hydrogen. So we need to recalculate the amounts of oxygen and hydrogen on this side of an equation. So let's see, we have six hydrogens, three times two, six hydrogens, six hydrogens in this molecule, plus we have three in this one. So we have nine hydrogens here. What about oxygens? We have six oxygens here, plus we have four oxygens from here. Therefore, we have 10 lots of oxygen atoms. So we have corrected our, this side of an equation, we have corrected calcium. So what do we deal with next? The rule stays exactly the same. We find the next thing that we can only fix in one way. So we don't have to touch this anymore. So let's deal with phosphorus because there is only one way by increasing this molecule. So we have one phosphorus here, we have two phosphorus molecules here. So we need to double this molecule, the amount of this molecule. So we are going to do just that. We will put two here. So now we double the amount of this molecule. So what do we get? We get two phosphorus. So yay, we match this up, great. However, now we also get knock-on effects on hydrogen as well as oxygen. So let's, let's do a recount. We have six oxygen here, six oxygen from here, as well as eight oxygen from here. Therefore, we have 14 oxygen atoms in total. Now, let's move on to hydrogen. We have six hydrogens here, as well as six hydrogens here. So what happens? We have 12 hydrogens in total on this side of an equation. Okay, so we are almost done actually. We matched up calcium, we matched up phosphorus, and now, now we only have to balance oxygens and hydrogens. So what is fun here is that we balanced calciums and we already balanced phosphorus. So we are not touching this, we are not touching this anymore. And because this contains calcium and phosphorus, we would like to avoid touching this if possible. So first, you know, first thing to check would be water. If we can fix this by balancing the amount of water. And this should be possible because what do we have here? We have nine oxygens here, 14 oxygens here. So difference, difference here is of five. Whereas here, we need to add 10 hydrogens. So as you can see, we have a difference of five oxygen atoms and 10 hydrogen atoms. And here we have two hydrogen atoms per one oxygen atom. So we need to add, we need to add five lots of this molecule to make up for these differences. Five lots. We already have one lots of water. So we're adding five lots of water. So in total, we will have six lots of water. And this is what we will put down. So what happened here? We have, we have now in total four, 14 oxygens. And we have in total 12 hy hydrogens.
So we are matched up. Everything is done. Everything is matching. Therefore, we have balanced the equation. So essentially, this is it. This is how you balance the equation using traditional method. And as I already said, tomorrow I will be covering how to do this for very, very difficult equations, which would be very, which would take very long time to do using this method. We can fix those equations using algebraic methods. So this is what I'll be covering in tomorrow. And thank you guys for listening. If you, if you want to stay up to date on daily sciences and daily maths, as well as some university level biomedical sciences videos, please, please hit that subscribe button below. And if you like the video, give it thumbs up. If you have any, any questions whatsoever, please do not hesitate to ask me. I am more than happy to answer you in comments. Thank you again for watching. See you next time.